Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question two for the Jan 2018 POA paper two. If you want to see the other solutions for this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out. And with that, let's get into the question. Okay, so we're going to take a little read on the top here. So it says, factory workers at the Sharp Brick Limited are paid $40 an hour, Monday to Friday, and time and a half on weekend days. Okay. The time card below shows the number of hours worked by each employee during a given week. Okay, cool. So we have U Marsh, I Stop, <laughs> D Park, and H Drive. Okay, interesting. Play on your words. All right, so we have the hours going down. Right now, um, what they did here is they put Sunday on the top and Saturday at the bottom. So you have to pay very close attention because a lot of times we. we we mentally, Monday to Friday, we work, and Saturday and Sunday, we don't work on the weekend, um, unless you're grinding real hard. <clears throat> so we, we tend to think of Saturday and Sunday should be grouped together. So just be careful when you're reading your, state, um, your information to know what they give you and where. So they give you all the hours. Okay. Uh, we have some information about deductions here. Deductions include the following. So national insurance, 5% of gross pay. Contribution to pension fund, 3% of gross pay. Income tax, 25% of pay after deducting national insurance and pension fund contributions. Okay, so what do they want us to do? So it says here, complete the form below by inserting the information for the four employees. And you'll notice there's only about five marks. All right, okay, so what do they want? They want hours work Monday to Friday, total pay Monday to Friday, hours work Saturday and Sunday, and total pay Saturday and Sunday, and gross pay. Now your gross pay is your pay before any of the deductions are made. So uh, as you can see below, I have the format basically recreated down there. So we are going to need the information on the top here in order to do this question. Okay, so um, maybe if I zoom in a little bit. Okay, that, that fits a little better. All right, so, okay, so let's take a look at you Marsh's hours. All right, so, uh, let's talk about the hours work Monday to Friday first. So we're going to go in the middle here. So 8 and 7 is 15, 8 and 6 is 14, 15 and 14 is 29. Now, employees are paid $40 an hour Monday to Friday. So notice there's no extra column to put the $40 between the number of hours worked and the pay. So what you're going to do, you're going to take that 29 and multiply it by 40. So it's going to look something like this, right? 29 and 11, 60. So they're kind of taking out space for you to show you work in. So you just kind of put in the answers. Now the hours work Saturday and Sunday for, sorry, for you Marsh, uh, it's just four hours, right? That's just this, this four hours here. And the rate of pay is time and a half on weekend days. So time and a half means you're going to take 40 and multiply by one and a half. 40 by one and a half is 60. So four by 60 is 240. All right. So... 4 by 60 is 240, and you're going to take 1160, add it to 240, and get 1400. Okay, so for I stop, so we're just going to, just going to repeat. So we're going to add up the numbers inside of here. 8 and 7 is 15, and 7 is 22. So that's 28. So initially, we're going to put 28 by 4. 40, sorry, 28 by 40, 1120. Weekends now, he has 4 hours on Sunday, 4 hours on Saturday. So that's 8. That's going to be 8 by 60. Because remember, it's time and a half. That's 480, 1120, and 480 is 1600. Next, D Park. So 3 8s are 24, 2 7s are 14, so that's 38 hours, 38 by 40. Right? And then, of course, he has the same 8 hours, 4 on Sunday, 4 on Saturday, so by the same 60, so the same 480 as for I Stop. And for H Drive, again, I'm seeing 3 8s are 24, that's 30, 37. So that's 37 by 40, and then he has three hours on Sunday, four on Saturday. Oops, sorry. Uh, so that's going to give us <coughs> seven. Seven by 60 is 420. So we have our column here for gross pay. So that's going to be important for the next part of the question. So let's take a look and see what they want in the next part of the question. So they want prepare the payroll for the four employees, right? So if we take a look at it here, we see we start off with gross pay, which is what we got in the table below for part one. Then we have national insurance deductions, 5% of gross pay. Pension deduction is 3% of gross pay. And then taxable income will be gross pay minus the sum of these two items here. Because income tax, as they told you, is 25% of income after having deducted 
the national insurance contributions and the pension contribution. Let's just scroll up so we could just confirm what I'm saying. Right, see? Deductions include national insurance, 5% of gross pay. Contribution to pension fund, 3% of gross pay. Income tax, 25% of pay after deducting national insurance and pension fund contributions. Okay, so um, we are going to need these figures here. So let's go down a little bit. All right, so let's go. So for you, Marsh, all right, <laughs> we have 1,400. So 1,400, right, for you, Marsh, and we have national insurance is 5%. So these figures are just kind of put in. So let me actually go down, go down to here. So we could just kind of do, so, five, so it's 5% 5 of the 1,400 is $70, 3% of that is 42. So we add 70 and 42, that's 112. We subtract it from the 1400 to get 1288. And then the income tax is 25% of that. And then to find net pay, you subtract your income tax from your taxable income. Okay, let's, let's go again. Let's try it again. So let's use iStop. iStop is 1600. You'll see it there, 1600. So we're going back down. So we're going to go iStop. So iStop, 1600, right? 5% of that is 80. 3% of, of 1600 is 48. You add those together, get 128 from that is 1472. You find 25% of that, you get 368, and you subtract that from the 1472 to get 1104. Okay, let's go. Who else? We have D Park. All right, D Park. So 2000, it was 2000? Yeah, 2000. <laughs> right? So 5% of that is 100. 3% of that is 60. 100 plus 60 is 160. 160 from 2000 is 1840. You find 25% of that figure, you get 460, and you minus 460 from the 1840 to get 1380. And finally, we have 1900 for each drive. So let's put that stuff in there. So we have 1900. 5% of that is $95. 3% of that 1900 is 57. 95 and 57 has 152. 152 from 1900 is 1748. You find 25% of that figure, you get 437, you subtract it from 1748, and we get 1311. All right, so that was six marks. So, so far we've just, we've earned a little more than half of the marks of the question. All right, okay, cool. So, next they're asking us some theory questions. State one example of a statutory deduction. Statutory deductions are deductions that are mandated by government. All right, so I think I gave a few examples down here. So one is income tax, PAYE. Next we have NIS, National Insurance Scheme or National Insurance Contributions. We also have health surcharge, which is something in Trinidad and Tobago. I'm not sure what they call it in the other islands. I know some people call it social security. Okay, okay, so I only give three. No, they asked for one, I gave three. If you guys can think of any others, message in the comment section below. All right, and Finally, they asked to define the term bonus again for, well, two marks. This one is two marks, all right? So let's see what I put here. So to define the term bonus, I said, uh, sorry, <laughs> an extra amount of money awarded to an employee as a reward. Okay, cool, for achieving a goal, all right? So you guys can give examples if you want. Again, it's only two marks, so you don't have to go too much into detail. All right, so I feel like we up to, what is that, 14 marks, and we have another six marks to get. Oh, we have a, a partnership question. Okay, cool. So I think I want to just rearrange my screen. So give me a couple of seconds and I'll be right back. Okay, let's go. So it says here, two former factory employees, Paris and London, created a partnership. They agreed to charge 10% interest on drawings and capital, share any remaining profits equally. So the table below shows the incomplete current accounts for the year ended 31st December 2017, in which the partnership earned a net income of 30000 So... We have here current accounts, uh, Paris and London. So this is the debit side. So London had a balance brought down on the debit side, which means London had a deficit on his or her current account. Uh, <clears throat> and and a, a balance brought down here. I think there's, a, there's an issue here, boy. I think one of them was supposed to have the debit balance and the other was supposed to have the credit balance. But from the current situation, I can't tell who. Um, but the good thing is we don't need to know because all they, all they are asking us for is to draw up the appropriation account for the partnership of Paris and London for the year ended 31st December 2017. 
All right, now let's just take a look and make sure. Right, so, so this tells us that this is the remainder of the marks for this question. So we don't have to worry about figuring out whose balance, which balance was whose. Okay, so to draw up an appropriation account, let, let's start by heading up properly. Again, please make sure I head up. So Paris and London appropriation account for the year ended 31st December 2017. Let's get some dollar signs going there. So they said the partnership earned a net income of 30,000. So let's put that in. And we have to add interest on drawing. That's the first thing we're going to do, right? So they give us the drawings figures here. And we are told that it's 10% interest on drawing so it's going to be 10 percent of 18,000 for paris which is 1800 and 10 percent of 1100 for london which is only going to be 110 so when we add those two together we get 1910 and we add that to the net income before appropriation now we're going to deal with the appropriation and the interest on capital could be the first item so interest on capital we have here 2000 and 3000 so we had no calculation to do they gave it to us paris 2 london 3 totaling 5 Take that from the 31,910, you got 26,910, and now we have to share the residual profit. So it says share any remaining profits equally. So we just have to divide that. It's going to give us what? 13,455, I think. Yeah, cool. Right, so that goes to Paris, that goes to London, totally same thing. Right. Again, there's no one right format for the appropriation account. I know some teachers insist they put salaries. So, but here, we have no salaries. So, haha, right? And some teachers, they like to close off here and, and just show that the total matches up here. Again, it's perfectly fine. I don't know that there's a mandate. There's, it has to be one particular format. But in any case, all right. So, ladies and gents, that's about it for this question. Again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below or message me on Instagram at, at adaptation. And don't forget to check out these playlists here. And don't forget to subscribe and check out my website for free PAA handouts. Anyway, ladies and gents, thanks again so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.